Hey guys, what's up? By Sectatron here from One Half Gazette, here with the next Clan Drifter video. This is going to be a fun one. I'm over at the Goodfellas. We're actually going to be taking a look at some attacks on the One Hive Genesis bases, so you'll see those in just a moment. First, I have to talk a little bit about the intro and the background music that you saw in the last video. Basically, I rewatched that video, thought about the channel a little bit, and honestly, I think it's a little bit cheesy, first of all, but more importantly, kind of what got the channel to the point it's at now was the quality, you know, straightforward content. It really wasn't the, you know, flashy animations or background music, so I feel like it's kind of detracting from the videos a little bit, and I think some of you guys felt the same way in the comments from what I saw. Now, a few, a few of you guys did like the, uh, the new features, but unfortunately, you're going to be disappointed if you did because I am taking those out of the videos going forward. I still have the new mic, so the sound should still sound awesome, but I'm not going to have those features anymore, and I think you guys can understand where I'm coming from. I want to keep the channel uh, kind of how it originally was and what got me here. Just keep doing what was working, so uh, that's what the channel is going to look like moving forward, and that's kind of the final decision on that, so hopefully you guys can kind of relate to where I'm coming from. But anyway, uh, taking a look at this uh, video, we're over at the Goodfellas, like I said, and uh, as I go through their clan right here, we're going to see some attacks on One Hive Genesis bases because we just had an arranged war with them. And uh, typically I don't show our own bases, but because they're going to be showing them on their YouTube channel anyway, it doesn't hurt for me to also show the bases. So you'll get to see a lot of cool attacks today on some very high level bases. Uh, but first, let's take a look at their war log as we always do for these videos. Um, you can see here almost on their 300th win, so that's something they'll be gunning for very soon, and uh, they'll probably do an arranged war or some kind of special thing for that. A lot of clans tend to do that, but uh, they have a solid war log, 294, only 32 losses, 5 draws, and uh, you can see they're killing it in wars with the exception of just a few close uh, wars against some high-level clans, FYSB being one of them, came down to percentage. Uh, you, you guys might remember we actually faced FYSB in One Hive Genesis pretty recently, but um, almost exclusively a sea of green on the rest of these. So awesome stuff. They're killing it in war. Definitely a top war clan. Um, taking a look at the war, we'll be seeing some attacks from this one. I'll go through it real quick just because I'm on the page anyway. Might as well. Uh, you can see as far as what we did to their bases, uh, missed that Town Hall 11, couldn't quite get it two-starred. At the end, we went for three stars on it as kind of a last-ditch uh, attempt to win the war, but I uh, couldn't quite get the two-star there, and then we had one less Town Hall 10 three-star than they did, and uh, those were kind of the differences in the war. But all the Town Hall 9s cleaned up. Awesome stuff to our 9s, just our 10s and 11s. Couldn't quite come through for the win, but you know it happens war to war. Some people have off wars, it's just part of the game. Uh, taking a look at what they did to our bases, pretty solid stuff from them. From them. Uh, nothing too flashy on either side, but they got the job done, got all the 11s three star, or all the 11s two starred, and uh, had one more Town Hall 10 two star than we did. Or t one more Town Hall 10 three star than we did. I'm mixing this up now. But yeah, those were the two stars that were the difference. So good, good war to them. They definitely brought their stuff. And uh, we'll take a look at some of these attacks as we go through the information in case you want to join their clan or just in case you're curious as we do in every clan drifter video. Uh, but anyway, this is something that we've seen quite a bit at Town Hall 11 for a Town Hall 10 trying to get the two star. It's the Baby Dragon Valk combo. I've made videos on it in the past, but I think it's important to show more attacks because it's very important to your clan if you're a Town Hall 10 who can go up and two star the Town Hall 11 because that frees up a Town Hall 11 attack to go down and three star a Town Hall 10. So um, taking a look at this attack, it helps that the Expos are on ground. That's what you, you want to look for because it's less damage coming at your Baby Dragons. Also, the air defenses are pretty deep in the base, so they're not going to be targeting the baby dragons either. It's really just the archer towers, and when you see that, that's a good sign that you can use this attack strategy, and it'll work very well for you. Uh, Todd's actually going to get 45% of the base taken out before he even drops a single Valk or his heroes or any of his spells, so a great investment here. I've seen this strategy fail sometimes, but it also can work awesome, and it works great here. So he'll get a big chunk of the base taken out, and then he can just make a straight dive for the town hall. Um, a little bit of information on the clan, they were started in September 2014 by a guy named Brandon, but um, along came Kevin, aka Kayefseya, I think is how you, his uh, nickname or his in-game name, 
and uh, he joined the clan when it was 9-2 and two in the war scene and really got it going into high gear. On January 1st, 2015, he was given leadership and uh, really got it to the elite war clan that it is today. So props to Kevin for that. Um, as these Valks enter the base, I like that heal. The Infernos aren't in range, so the heal will get the full benefit. And uh, watch this freeze. As soon as the CC troops come out, he freezes that, that um, eagle and the CC troops. So that way the Valks don't aggro onto that golem. He needed those Valks to get the town hall. If the golem distracted them, they probably wouldn't have gotten it. So I like that freeze. Gets the eagle and also, even more importantly, the CC troops so they don't distract the Valks because the Valks are very easily uh, distracted when they're going into the middle of a base. So 65%, that's awesome for a Town Hall 10. Hitting a Town Hall 11, nice attack to Todd. We'll keep moving and we'll talk a little bit more about their clan. Um, going to a Town Hall 10 three-star, number nine, uh, Son of Jay, taking out Thor. I'm gonna grab a quick drink real quick. Um, sorry about this. All right, uh, Son of Jay coming in here with just a basic Valk attack. I mean, you don't need to bring miners or bowlers necessarily. Don't always need the newest uh, attack strategy. Sometimes the old ones will get the job done. And uh, you can see he comes in here with a queen walk. It helps that Thor's point defense is only Town Hall 9 level for the most part because that means he doesn't have to invest quite as many rages into keeping his queen up. So that's a nice benefit. It allows him to do a deep queen charge into this base and really like, get a lot of value for it. So you'll see as the queen moves up at the top of the base, he also does a very slick thing at the bottom left. Once he sends in his kill squad, he's going to drop down two balloons and get those two uh, defenses taken out at the bottom there. That golem will tank for the uh, for the archer tower. Here come these balloons. Unfortunately, one does go down to that seeking air mine, but the other will get in there and get both defenses taken out. So great value for those balloons. That's what you want to look for at Town Hall 10. On these spread out bases, sometimes the air defenses don't cover the entire base. So some sneaky balloon play like that can get in there and get the job done on a few defenses, give you a leg up on the base. Anyway, the golem still tanking, the Valks, the king moving in at the bottom. At the top, the queen pops the ability. She takes out the enemy queen, and right here, he has a freeze for that inferno. Now, unfortunately, he's just a little bit late. I guess he was distracted with dropping other stuff on the base. So you'll see he drops that jump, and then remembers to drop the freeze, but it's too late. The queen goes down just before he can drop the freeze. So that was unfortunate, kind of wastes the freeze, plus loses his queen. But the healers actually peel off, get on the Valks, and get them pretty much back to full health because the Inferno Tower isn't in range of them. So it gets the full heal from the healers, and uh, that jump will stay around long enough for them to get through the wall and get to that last Inferno. Notice how Thor has the uh, storages next to his um, Inferno Towers, and that's to defend against miners. To add some HP they have to deal with while they're in range of the miners, but it's a magnet for Valks, so this is a good base to use Valks on because they'll get in there, they're attracted to that Inferno, and they'll take it out as they take out the storages. So bowlers and Valks actually do a great job when you see those storages next to the Infernos. Drops down his hogs, the last heal. Didn't even need that heal really, but drops it anyway. Awesome attack to Son of Jay, getting the three star on one of our Town Hall 10s. All right, as we go on to the Town Hall 9s, we'll talk a little bit more about some more information on their clan. And uh, we have some nice attacks at the, <clears throat> sorry, the Town Hall 9 level. We have a dragon attack, so not something you see that much. But on these, some of these bases that have the air defenses out like this, uh, it really works out well. You can get some cheap air defenses taken out. Plus, uh, get in there and double zap Quake those two in the middle. Awesome stuff there. So as we look at this attack, um, another piece of information about this clan is that... Um, uh, sorry, I'm trying to find it right here. Okay, so uh, the main kind of YouTube channels that kept them afloat were One Hive Raids, uh, Clash with Maddie, Power Bang. Those were the staples that really got them learning the three-star attacks. I guess One Hive Raids initially than the other two as they kind of progressed and as more YouTube channels became popular. 
I think a few of them actually do watch my channel as well, which is awesome to see having some uh, viewers in these clans that I visit. Well, I know I have to at least have one who applied for this series, but I think a few more also, so that's awesome to see. And it's nice to see that in general they're looking for uh, some nice quality content out there to improve their own attacking game, and uh, they're really interested in taking this to the next level. So uh, those YouTube channels definitely helped them out and uh, got them to where they are now. And uh, currently the clan wars three times per week. They search on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And uh, Friday search is typically the arranged war that they try to do every week. And on Sunday nights after the arranged war, they have a nice night off so everyone can kind of recover from the arranged war and get ready for another week of wars on Monday. Um, so that being said, taking a look at the rest of this attack, you can see pretty much just came through the base with dragons, overpowered it once all the air defenses were down, has the king just kind of for a cleanup role at this point. He didn't have any kind of big duty to take care of on this attack. I think the expos may have been on ground also, so that's always a bonus. It helps with the attack when you have that feature. So nice attack to uh, Danny for the win, taking out Yaji, and we'll take a look at two more attacks as we go through some more stuff about their clan. So next base is 18. Uh, here it is, uh, costly, being taken out by uh, LTHS. And typically you don't see these this many hogs on an attack anymore. You typically see you know more bowlers and all this kind of crazy stuff. He might actually use bowlers, but really he's doing a very small kill squad compared to what you see nowadays. And all four of his spells are heal spells. So I like this attack because it was kind of a throwback in a way. It does have some of the new troops, but it also is kind of reminiscent of before we saw um, a bunch of hybrid attacks back when Town Hall 10 was, you know, bringing a golem for a, your kill squad with your heroes to get in there, take out the queen, then using hogs on the rest of the base. So definitely a good attack. And as we look at it, some more information on their clan. Typically, um, they do 20v20 and 25v25 wars. Um, and then they, they I get, oh, hold on, sorry for a second. Uh, then they merged with a clan called Eternal Destiny. That was the previous war size. Now the wars are typically 30v30 or possibly 40v40 depending on when the time is. So uh, originally were kind of smaller wars, but the merge with Eternal uh, Destiny brought the wars uh, a little bit higher up with more members in the clan. And you can see they matched us for a 30v30 war and they have pretty much an almost full clan. So they're definitely uh, pretty full, but we'll also talk a little bit about their recruitments and uh, how you can get involved there because they still are looking for new members. Um, they, um, trying to find the next piece of information real quick as I scroll down right here. Uh, yeah, okay, for arranged wars, that's this question. Um, sorry about this, I didn't have it quite as organized as I should have, but you still have the background attack to watch, I guess. Uh, anyway, though, for arranged wars, they sometimes do bi-weekly, but ever since the merge, they've been down to pretty much just once per week, and that's plenty usually for most people. And as long as they can, you know, get a roster going, they're, they're in for a war, depending on who it is, uh, or not depending on who it is. And you can see they ward us this weekend for a nice, uh, fun time. So they're, they're on the arranged war scene is the point. And, uh, they're definitely going to, uh, be one of the top clans now and probably in the future. And, uh, they're doing some great stuff. So anyway, we'll fast forward, uh, through the rest of this attack. And then we'll take a look at one more, have just a few more pieces of information. And then we'll wrap up this video. Uh, we have... I try to do a lower level hero attack, but the problem is the Town Hall 9s these days, um, and I know I sound like an old guy, oh, the Town Hall 9s these days, yeah, the Town Hall 9s these days, uh, they have really high level heroes, so 20 v, or 2020 is typically some of the lowest level heroes you see, and I know a lot of you guys out there have 15, 15 heroes, or even lower, and uh, you want to see some low level attacks, it's, whenever I see them, I try to show them, but uh, 2020 is some of the lowest I can find, and uh, this is Relic taking on Puffer Joe, and he's doing a HG, HB attack, but it's from the other side of the base. So I wanted to show you guys that you can do it from the other side of the base, just make sure you keep your hogs away from the queen until she's been engaged 
uh, sorry about that, until she's been engaged by the uh, kill squad. You have to be a little more careful on your hogs, but you can still do it uh, from the other side of the base, especially when you see a base like the one I just made, where it looks like it wants you to attack from the hero compartment. That's when you want to uh, change it up and go at it from the other side of the base. Works out very nicely here. But anyway, a little bit more about the clan. Uh, Town Hall 9's, the requirement if you're looking to join, is 2020 heroes. Uh, Town Hall 10, 30, 35 heroes. Town Hall 11, uh, you need the 40, 40 heroes. It doesn't specify the warden, but I assume you want your warden to be, um, depending on your defense level, possibly level 5 or level 10. So that warden shouldn't be lacking, but definitely need the 40, 40 heroes if you're a Town Hall 11. All players do start in the feeder clan called TGF Rising, and then they work their way up to the main clan. And members who use voice chat and are actively social generally tend to move up faster. So if you're someone who likes to be on Discord a lot, chatting, I assume they use Discord. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they do. Uh, if you're on that a lot, you'd like to interact with the clan, that might help you move up a little bit quicker. Not to say that that won't hinder you if you don't, but uh, typically people like to move up to the main clan pretty quickly, and that's how you can get a leg up on some other recruits. Anyway, though, um, finally, their YouTube is Kayefseya Gaming. That that I don't know if that's a nickname, but whatever it is, the leader's in-game name, you can see it in the clan here if you if you look up their clan. But Kayefseya Gaming is their YouTube. That's where you'll see some more attacks on uh, our bases, I guess. And uh, their Twitter is Goodfellas Clan. So check them out on Twitter, check them out on YouTube. And uh, they're a great clan, so apply if you're interested. I assume you can just uh, hit them up on YouTube or Twitter with your application, and they'll tell you where to go from there. They might have a website or something. I'm not exactly sure. But um, I'll put the links to the Twitter and YouTube in the description for you guys if you want to check them out. They're an awesome clan. Uh, one last time, though, guys, thank you for watching this video. Really appreciate it. And no music, no intro. It's a little too cheesy. It's not what this channel is about. So... Uh, hope you guys are happy to hear that. Some of you aren't, but that's just the way it is. And uh, I look forward to making some more videos this week. Have some awesome stuff planned. And you guys will see what I mean as we go throughout the week. Thanks for watching this once again. I'll see you guys later. Bye, Sectatron out.